This is uh, John Mount from WinVector LLC, a uh, data science training and consulting company. And I'm super excited to announce that Barug, the Bay Area Our Users Group meeting is back. And it will be meeting Tuesday, October 15th, 2024 in uh, Menlo Park. And I really hope to see you there. The topic I'll be talking about is basically a lot more of our data that we see for clients is coming from censored processes where we don't actually see the data that the system is generating. The easiest example, which uh, Nina Zumal demonstrated, is when you're regressing for a numeric quantity, but you don't see the quantity, you see the quantity maximized with zero. And um, this leads to classic statistical methods such as Tobit regression. And what I've been doing more and more for prototyping for clients is prototyping using STAN. STAN is a Markov chain sampler and can use this power to guess plausible values of hidden variables and parameters. And uh, I have three examples which I'm working on. One is replicating Nina's Tobit style work. The other is learning to rank preferences, which is what I'll be talking about at Barug. And then another time series example where I get into the difference between ephemeral or transient and durable external variables, which are some of the details of uh, RMAX style modeling. And the idea is in Stan, we can specify what we want and leave it to the solver to see whether that can be solved or not. For the Tobit example, we have training data that looks like this, which is some sort of regression process where the number Y is a function of the number X, but there's also Y is maximized with zero. So for the lower X on the left, we really don't know what Y was proposed before the maximum was taken. Now, if we just linearly fit such data, we get the blue line instead of the concept gold dotted line. And we're uh, maximizing our prediction with zero because that's our domain knowledge, but we still get the wrong line if we fit all the data. We could try something, quote, clever, which is what happens in most data science projects. You need a series of good ideas. And we could try fitting on only the positive data. And that does give us a better fit, but still not a good one. Or what we can do is say, what evidence is the data about the model? Re-encode that evidence into STAN, which is how we do it here. And I spend a lot more time on this when I'm training or teaching on this. And then we run that STAN process and it recovers the model. The blue line, as you see, matches the gold dotted concept. And the ribbon I'm showing here is actually the STAN modeled one standard deviation distribution of the data, which also is correct. You may not want to use STAN in production, but it's really good for prototyping and saying which features of the system do I need to model and which ones can I elide. STAN lets you switch these in and out quickly, and then once you get what set of features are required to be faithful to your system or your data, you can then implement it some other way, or even use STAN as the fitter and export the model. Anyway, thank you very much for your time. Back to my point, I hope to see you at Barug, where I'll be using Stan to do the somewhat complicated problem of learning user preferences from their online behavior of which items they chose and rejected, a classical hard problem of online marketing. And uh, thank you very much for your time.